Hello once again, I'm Kevin Turner from Real Estate Talk and welcome to the special podcast on behalf of Australian Property Investor Magazine. Well, there's a lot of talk about what's happening in the market, whether it's going to boom or whether it's busting. And uh, some commentators are saying there's not much left in the cycle. Well, let's just find out. I'm going to talk to Michael Yardney from Metropole Property Strategist. Michael, thank you for your time. My first question to you is what is happening with house prices? Well, if you think look back over the last couple of years, the property market around Australia bottomed in around May 2012. So that's about two years ago. So we've actually had two pretty good years in real estate. Different states have been doing it differently, of course, Kevin. So the last couple of years, the property cycle has been driven in particular by Sydney, Melbourne and Perth. And the other states are starting to catch up. And you're right, Kevin, because it's been going on for close to two years now, some people are a little bit worried. Is it too late to get into this cycle? And the answer is, it depends. It is not one market. There are markets within markets at different states, different price points, different uh, geographic locations. So let's get into that as we have a bit of a talk today. Uh, Well, of course, we can see that graph that's on the screen now, the annual change in capital city dwelling values. Just take us through that, Michael. We can look at the the big movers have been Sydney and Melbourne, of course. Well, Sydney had very little fall during the global financial crisis too, Kevin. It only dropped about 1.5%. Melbourne's median prices dropped about 5% and uh, Brisbane's a lot more. But then when you see what's happened over the last year, Sydney's growth, according to this graph from RP data, shows that the median prices increased by about 15.5%. Mm. Melbourne, 11.6%. Brisbane, 4.8%. Perth did pretty well, much the same as Brisbane as well. Uh, And the other capital cities lagged a bit. Well, what are the drivers? Why are prices rising, Michael? Kim, the main reason prices are driving is because of falling interest rates making houses affordable. Now, I know some people are saying houses are unaffordable, and they always have been for first-home buyers. They've always been for beginners. But with rising wages, with rising household wealth, and very low interest rates, despite home values increasing, still overall, if you look at disposable income uh, and what it would cost to service a mortgage, house prices are still affordable in all our capital cities. Even in the big ones like Sydney, they're about as affordable as they were 10 years ago, Kim. Okay, well, we can see there uh, another graph. Um, This is talking about affordability and prices. What are you seeing there, Michael? Well, what this shows from the Commonwealth Bank and uh, Housing Industry Association is is that when you look at disposable income, how much you're left with after paying for other things, house prices are, as I said, as affordable as they've been for a couple of decades. Yes, they're difficult. uh, It's difficult to get on the property ladder. That means you've got to save, you've got to uh, get a deposit and get going. But interest rates are the lowest they've been for so long, Kevin, that it's at five, you should have in many cases a four even in front of your interest rate for your home or your investment, but at least it's going to have a five compared to the sevens and eights and tens we used to pay, Kevin. And so even mm. though property values have increased, what this is showing is it's actually you, the percentage of your disposable income required isn't as high as it used to be. Yeah, well, population growth, of course, is increasing demand for housing, Michael, isn't it? Very much so. So as this next graph shows, it's not just affordability, but the fact that there's more of us. Last year, we added about 400,000 people to our population in Australia. That's like adding a Canberra. Most of them um, came from overseas. So a large percentage of that population growth was uh, migrants, immigration, as the graph shows. Of course, there was also natural increase. We're having a little bit of a baby boom. And most of those people are living in our capital cities, in particular in our four big capital cities. And the majority of the immigration Uh, those migrants are moving to Melbourne and Sydney. And interestingly, they all want to live in much the same sort of locations. This is, of course, pushing up demand at a time when supply isn't keeping up. What about um, building? Are we building too many houses, Michael? In some locations, we are. Unfortunately, in some locations in Melbourne, there looks like there's going to be an oversupply of new apartments particularly around the main roads. But when you look at this next graph showing residential building approvals, you'll see that house construction hasn't actually gone up much over the last couple of decades. The blue line is showing that we're building much the same number of houses as we did before, when interestingly our population growth has increased considerably. But the brownish line shows an increase in apartments, in flats, in units, in townhouses, which I guess is in line more, Kevin, with how people are wanting to live today. Yeah. 
What about investors, Michael? We hear a lot of reports about how investors are putting pushing prices up. Is that in fact the case? Well, when you have a look at this next graph from uh, Australian Property Monitors and Dan Dr. Andrew Wilson, it's actually showing that in Sydney, 41% of loans are being uh, taken out by investors. In Melbourne, about 25%. So first homeowners are not driving those markets. In fact, first homeowners demand has been pulled forward a bit a couple of years ago by first homeowner grants. So in Victoria and New South Wales, sure, investors are... Uh, driving the markets. But if you look at Queensland, South Australia, Western Australia in this chart, what it shows is first homeowners are at about the right sort of level and in fact investor demand is about what's normal as well. The demands come from local investors, Kevin. It's come from overseas investors, particularly driving the new and off the plan projects, and also from baby boomers and to an extent Gen Xers investing in their self-managed super funds. That's a trend that has starting to change the landscape of our property markets. Now, what about uh, how we're performing against the previous peak, which I think was about in October 2010, Michael? Yes. If you look back, we had the global financial crisis in 2008, and then the government gave us lots of incentives. They dropped interest rates. They brought in different first homeowner grants. They even gave us pink bats. Remember that, Kevin? Yeah, I do. And what I do. it did was it made us feel comfortable, and so our property markets boomed until about October, November 2010, when interest rates rose, and as interest rates rose, it started to put a damp on the market. And if we look forward in due course, the government, the Reserve Bank's again going to push up interest rates and that's going to slow this cycle down. But it slowed down in, the, it peaked in 2010, October to November 2010. So looking at the chart now from RP Data, you'll see that uh, only Sydney has had a significant change since its previous peak. Melbourne's only up 4.7%. So after inflation, in fact, Melbourne prices haven't gone up since the last peak. Perth and Canberra are the only other states that had just a little bit increase from their previous peaks. What this indicates to me, Kevin, is that we're not in boom territory. Our property values have gone up, but over uh, the last five years or so, just other than Sydney, kept pace with inflation. So we're not about to have a bus, Kevin. Okay. Well, do you think the prices are going to continue to rise, Michael? I believe they will, but Kevin, it's unlikely to rise to the huge extent it did in 2013 and even the beginning of 2014. Kevin, our property markets went up on average close to 11%, but inflation was only 2 maybe 3%, and that's unsustainable. So I see this year as a, a time of more moderate price growth. That means that you can't just buy any property and hope it's going to increase. It's really going to be a time to be selective in the markets or to maybe manufacture some of your own capital growth, Kevin, by doing things like renovations or development. So the bottom line, Michael, is not too late to get into the cycle? It's never too late because there's different markets, there's different segments in markets, uh, there's uh, different states at different stages of the cycle, but it's not a time just to buy any property and set and forget. It's time to be an active property investor, doing your correct research, selecting the locations that are going to be likely to outperform the averages, and then actively managing your property, maybe even manufacturing some capital growth, Kevin. Michael, it's been great talking to you. We are out of time. I want to thank you. There's a, a huge amount of information you've given us there, and it's great to be able to talk to you again. Michael, thank you very much. My pleasure, Kevin. Thank you.